it's been a long day. Welcome to the channel and uh, welcome to this live watercolour demonstration here from the studio. We are live at last. Um, and we're going to do a very quick 15 20 minute watercolour demonstration of crystalline. Crystalline is like a, it's a pigment based watercolour. It's similar to brusho, but it isn't brusho. What this is, is basically, it's like a, it's like a powder. It's like pure raw pigment. And that's exactly what I'm going to use over the next 20 minutes. I'll have to go back and edit this video, I think. Um, now, if you are new to the YouTube channel, do make sure you hit that subscribe button and, and hit that notification bell. Uh, we've recently just got over 130,000 subscribers. Um, so a big thank you if you've subscribed to the channel already. If not, please do. A uh, big thank you to channel members. Rosemary Baldock is with me live today, your channel member. If you're a channel member, do let me know in the comments and we'll give you a, a little shout out as well. But other than that, we're going to get started. We've got a sheet of watercolour paper here. This particular sheet of paper is stuck to a board. Um, it's roughly about A4 in size. Materials over here, I've got the set two of my crystalline that we actually sell on watercolour TV. So you can pick this up. This is a brand new set we've put together. There's a bit of an offer on these. You can get these for £20 at the minute. So a great little offer. Um, these contain five bottles of crystalline pigment. And what you've actually got here is you've actually got um, orange, rose, turquoise, plum violet and olive cream. These are brilliant for the autumnal season. It's a bit of an example of what you can do with crystalline here. That lovely, vibrant, explosive watercolour. So we've got those there. Pop them just at the side there. I've got a palette here. And there's a few ways to use crystalline, but the most popular way is to sprinkle it on the paper and use a spray, a diffuser spray, something like this, where you can actually spray on your page. Uh, we've got ourselves a sneaky coffee here, as I mentioned on the bit that you couldn't hear. And literally, I want to get straight into this. So what I want to do here is we're going to take some masking tape long enough to go across the picture. I'm going to pop that probably about here. Now, I just want to wobble it a little bit, make it not make it too perfect. Get the fingernails in it as well. And very simply, I want to use this masking tape to protect the bottom section of the watercolour paper. This is about A4, so that's all protected. Like I said, that will come off a little bit later, but I want to sprinkle some uh, crystalline on here. Now, we have got a bit of an offer running on crystalline. Just very, very quickly want to show you, jump on the website, all the W's watercolour.tv, click on the art shop and come down to, I'll pop links in the description, come down to watercolour paint and you'll see the two sets of crystalline that we do. We do the kind of set one which is the summery spring colors and set two is the brand new one we've just launched it this like well today if i'm honest this one contains um the autumnal winter colors beautiful for the woodlands beautiful for that kind of thing so brand new set very limited stock of those about a dozen in stock at an introductory price of 20 pound normally 25.99 so do check those out should you be interested but what we're going to do is we're going to simply uh, put an explosion of autumnal colors on here and we're going to start off with some orange. OK, now this is quite an exciting little medium to use. If you've never used it before, what you do is you sprinkle on the crystalline on your paper. Now, obviously, nothing's happening when you first do this. So you sprinkle it on like that. Doesn't look very exciting. And a little bit goes a mile. I mean, one of these bottles will do in excess of 100 pictures. Easy. Nothing's happening yet. You know, stay with us. The next one is going to be the from the brand new set, this is olive green, bit of a shake, shake up the pigments. Don't get this mixed up with brusho, very different to brusho. I'm going to sprinkle this on in some of the gaps, maybe, in some of the gaps that you've, you've got. Put a little bit of that around there. Now you can get your fingers in this, you can give it a bit of encouragement, give it a bit of encouragement to mix around the paper, brush it around. You can dust it around a little bit, put a bit in the corners. I want to put some shadow in this, I want some shadow. So I'm going to use another one of the colours, which is Plum Violet. Again, this is in the brand new set too. We've got very limited stock of these. So do, if you're interested, you can check them all out on the website, watercolour.tv. Sort of sponsored by Watercolour TV. So I'm going to sprinkle some of the darker colours towards the bottom, which would be the Plum Violet. A little bit in the corners, I think it'd be quite nice as well. Um, other than that, we're going to explode this thing with paint. Now you get five bottles in the kits. We'll talk more about those. We've got this spray. We're going to spray this over the top of all this. And literally, we have no idea what's going to happen until we actually 
start to spray. You can see the colour starts to explode instantly. And the more you spray, the more, <laughs> literally, of an explosion of colour you're going to get on your background. Look out, look at the cut, look at the colours. It's just awesome. I love it. And the more you attack this thing with water, the more it will explode with paint. And you can see how that's happening. Now, what we're seeing here is we're seeing greens, we're seeing blues, we're seeing yellows. Beautiful, that. Love that. So we're kind of filling the background in with just, just vibrancy. It's like one of those magic eye pictures. Now, if you're thinking, what's the difference between this and Brusho? Brusho is dye based. This is purely 100% pigment. The more you spray this, the more the colours will come through the oranges, the greens. The plum violet at the bottom is lovely as well. So that's how this actually works. And you don't know how it's going to react until it actually dries as well, which is lovely. Now, obviously, you can move the thing around, you can alter it, you can lift it, you can shake it, you can let it all do its magic. But this is pure watercolour pigment at its finest in here. So quite clever, quite a clever product made in the UK as well. We've got these exclusive sets that I've designed with the company that makes Brusho. Just going to mop up some of that excess water a little bit there. I don't want a huge amount of water on this, but I love how it comes alive. Now, I've got a size 10 brush here, just a normal size 10 brush. I'm going to manipulate some of the colours towards the bottom. Now I know towards the bottom of this, it's more like plum violet. So I'm literally using a brush here and I'm twisting the paint because I want some shadow at the bottom of this picture here. So we're going to twist it in and we'll get a little bit around the corners here. Beautiful. So letting the paint just explode against the paper. You'll see these colours change as it dries as well. It's lovely how it changes. What I want to do then is I'm going to take the brush. I'm going to take the brush. Let's come back with the camera a little bit here. I'm going to take the brush and we're going to go straight up, straight up here. And we're going to do some lines. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring some distant trees into this woodland here. Okay, so literally going in and bringing in trees, lines going up like so. So imagine this is the out of focus background kind of vibe coming through here. Beautiful, that. Right? Now, again, working all this through. So literally dragging the paint against the what It's just a standard issue sheet of watercolour paper. That's what we use. I'm trying not to make it so the light doesn't reflect too much. It's always difficult in the studio with the light bouncing off the paper. So. Brusho is dye based. This is watercolour based, which means you can use it literally like watercolour. And we'll see that in action a little bit later as well. Just stick with me over the next 10 minutes or so. Beautiful, love that. Now, you can see how this is changing. It's changing by the second. The colours, the autumnal colours are coming through here, which is absolutely beautiful. Now, what I want to do here is just come back to the orange while the paper's a bit damp. I'm going to dry the picture off in a minute, but before I do that, I just want to sprinkle on. I want to lay this thing flat. I'll try and get close in. The light will reflect until it's dry, but it will be dry soon. I'm going to sprinkle some orange in while this paper's wet because I've sprayed quite a lot of water on here. So what's going to happen is that the brush oh, sorry, the crystalline, you've got me saying it now, is going to react to what's on the paper. And we're seeing the little bits of that little, if I get really close into this, you'll see the little explosions coming through of colour. Can you see the little explosions of colour? And the more you leave it to dry on its own, the more it changes. Don't be afraid to put just a gentle sprinkle on. You don't need a huge amount of this stuff because it's quite, quite powerful but look how the reds are coming through look how the vibrance is coming through it's beautiful stuff to work on you should you should give it a go it's just experimenting it's that's basically what it is here we're experimenting with lots of beautiful colors lots of vibrancy lots of clean zesty autumnal colors we can leave this to try look how the yellow just explodes if i give that a tilt you can possibly see it a little bit better just about there okay so that's doing it's doing its thing it's doing its thing i want to leave that to dry if i'm honest i will be using a heat gun i've got a i've got a hair dryer that's hanging around the studio somewhere here it is i've got a little a little heat gun back of the studio and uh, if i zoom back quite away you can see i want to give this a dry the audio will go off while driving as it's drying you'll see the whole thing change 
Let's see how the colour spread distorts. All of these little explosions of colour. This is where you start to see those colours come through. Look at this beautiful autumnal background here. There we go, that's like watching paint dry. Now the great thing about this is it will completely change once it's dry. And the more I leave that to dry, the better it will be. So let me just mop up any excess crystalline. So again, to make it clear, Brusho is, is a dye-based pigment that just reacts with water. This is pigment-based, it's actual physical pigment. Now what that means is it means that we can actually use it more like watercolour, you can use it actually like an actual physical watercolour paint. So in the palette, while that's having another moment or two to soak in, you can see a couple of examples of pictures I've done here using, using it here. So it's quite effective, but in the palette here, if I take some of this, some of the plum violet and drop that just in here, sprinkle a little bit goes a mile, pop some of that in. I also want some turquoise as well, so turquoise is in the set, give it a little shake if you've not used it for a while, drop that in. Those two colours are beautiful there. Now let's get a bit more turquoise. Quite vibrant, so using it like traditional watercolour all of a sudden means that you can take a brush, a normal everyday watercolour brush, with a bit of water and you can mix it. You can literally mix it in and you get that lovely deep colour. I'll do the same, just add a bit of water with the turquoise. So you're starting to get dark colours coming through here. We're going to use these dark colours. You can mix it with traditional watercolour as well, which you can't easily do with brush -o. But we're going to let this thing become part of what it is. And then we'll jump back down to the picture and literally we're going to go in and we're going to paint in some sort of background trees, if you like here. So it's fluid as anything, this stuff. So going in, get the variations and that lovely sort of deep woodland coming through here. We'll start to pull some branches out as well. We are going to paint in some background on this as well. So using just a normal paintbrush, this is actually one of my own brushes, it's called a super point brush. We'll bring some of that in. We can obviously play around with tones of colour as well. We can get some lighter trees, just little flicks going up along the picture. We're going to bring some detail in this later on. So you can see those autumnal colours working against those trees. And if you look at the palette, you see the colours are quite dark. It's a mixture of turquoise and uh, plum violet, what I'm using here, over this side as well. Very different style of painting, to be fair. The background, because I'm using a nice quality cotton paper, the paper is still slightly damp, which is all right, it does its job. It helps the paint to spread a little bit. But you never know what's going to happen on the paper until you start painting. That's the cool thing about this. It's got a few little random flicks going up from the bottom there. This will help this foreground stand proud. Longer ones, shorter ones. I want some more colour. I want some more of that plum. So I'm going to get, get a bit more plum in there. Put it in there some. Sprinkle it in. A little bit goes a mile. Yeah, look at that lovely, like a deep, rich red. You can see why it's called plum, can't you? I'll pop some of that over these trees a little bit here as well. So 
literally working in. Beautiful. Now, because this colour's got more of a red to it, it's going to push those more turquoise based colours behind, so you're getting more depth instantly. And this little woodland effect in the middle here. Let's just bring these through here. In the middle, we're going to be using the brush quite fine and uh, do some little bits of little random spots and dots, but I kind of want to bring in a little bit of a an old rustic fence kind of thing going off here. Bring that down and then just bring that detail in. I want some kind of a focal point here. I'm working very quick, so I want to keep this as brief as I can today. But it's just a nice way to demonstrate what... A lot of people have been buying this off of Watercolor TV, which is great. So thank you if you bought some recently. But it's just... I wanted to give you a little bit of a, a taste of what it actually is and how it works and what it does and what it's designed to do and how it how it is in relation to Brush Show and the differences between the two. Mainly, it's the vibrancy. It's without a doubt, it's the vibrancy. I've got quite an interesting brush over here. I'll pop that one away. I've got this little brush here, which is called a branch and detail brush. We're going to grab that one very quickly. This one is a much more of a pointy kind of brush. Can you see how that's much more fine? Matthew Palm branch and detail brush. We'll get close into this. Uh, we're going to go in. I'm going to bring this thing in and just to get a little bit more detail from these trees. It's amazing, but the paper is still damp. I love that. Now, I normally do very traditional style watercolour painting. And this Sunday, which will be the 29th, we've actually got a virtual workshop coming up. I want to show you some information. I do these pretty much every week and have been doing for the past four or five years. This particular one's coming up on the uh, 29th. And we're going to be going to the wonderful Peak District and paint a lovely autumnal landscape. Um, the image you can see on there is actually Chatsworth. So Chatsworth House in Derbyshire is where we're going to be going. So do make sure you come and join me for that. Uh, we've got about a dozen spaces left for that one. I'll show you how you can book that in a second or two. I'm just going to add a few little branches to this. Not that, that. And we're going to go in. This is one of those demos where everything's going to go wrong, isn't it, today? So I've been teaching live workshops online for a good four and a half, nearly five years now. And a lot of you guys that are here hopefully have already taken part in one in the past. Let me know if you've if you've taken part in one of those virtual workshops of, of old. And uh, let me know if you're taking part in the one this Sunday. Like Brian, you're taking part, aren't you, this Sunday? So I'm going to put some lighter lighter background trees are going to go in here back to the other bush so i've actually used the same color but diluted that's the plum violet diluted it's almost a shadow gray i'm going to add some branches up in between here these are in the gaps these are literally in the gaps so basically if we come back with a camera here so you can see that whole thing I'm adding these in the little gaps in between, basically keeping it as simple as possible. So you can see I'm just going in and just adding a few little flicks going upwards like that, just to make that off from the wood. We can then take away the masking tape at the bottom, very steady, like that. So that reveals a quite a crisp, clean edge across the base. Now, just to finish this little mini 25, 30 minute demo off, I want to put some shadows in. Before I do that, I'm going to have a little sip of coffee. Cheers. It's been a long week. It's been a long three weeks, but we're here live, sat in the studio, covered in crystal iron, which is great fun. Listen, have a look online, check it all out. And uh, do make sure you check out the work workshop coming up this Sunday while things are drying very quickly. You can see here, this is the website. Right at the top of the website, you'll see a button with a date on. You can see that here just changing from white to turquoise. That's the date of the upcoming one. So this 
weekend the 29th we've still got a dozen spaces for painting a beautiful autumnal landscape with country house river and golden trees this is going to be based on chats within the peak district this is not using crystalline this is using watercolor all the information for booking a space is in the description below so do make sure you check that out now i want to be using on its own i want to be using putting a few shadows in here and i want to use the turquoise because that's quite a nice color for shadows in a snow scene so we're going to use a very pale watery turquoise here back to this I'm going to add some shadows coming down from these trees get the light coming in Make some depth, quickly get some water, literally just water here. And we're gonna just brush it into the picture. I'm also gonna make sure the brush comes into contact with the bottoms of those trees as well, because I do wanna create a bit of a wintry vibe. Quick, spontaneous watercolor. That to me is what crystalline does exhibit quite nicely. I wanna darken the corner a little bit here. I might even pop a bit of violet in the corner there, just to give it more of a, a slightly richer shadow. But hopefully you can see it looks like a bit of a wintry landscape coming through there making use of the watercolor paper that we actually have and it will give us some like a snow scene basically we've created a very quick and simple snow scene here in watercolors and um, if i get really close in just very briefly while briefly while we get towards the last little bit of this take some more of the turquoisey shadow color and just want to add a couple of extra shadows making sure that we've got a nice crisp edge working through. What I'm, I'm gonna do as well, just very quickly, I wanna pop something over the top of the snowy area, like that. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take some of the sap green and sprinkle this over the tops of the trees. I mean, pretty much these are dry. You know, it's not completely dry, but it's dry enough. So I'm actually re-adding this. I'm re-adding this over the tops of the trees here, simply. I just want to get a little bit more colour coming through. That's the sap green. And then I've got my little spray. I've protected the bottom section. And if I get close into this, you'll see how the paint is just ever so slightly spread in. I'm creating a little bit more of a vibrancy. That's enough. don't want to do too much of that. I don't want the paint to spread. And I don't really can see this, but if you look close at this, you'll hopefully see how the paint, the little yellow and green mixtures that are coming through are starting to spread quite nicely. You'll see it lovely over this side. If I tilt that forward a little bit, can you see that colour? So it's there. You're creating depth over the top of the trees. And we'll come back a little bit here. We've created a very simple snow scene, which I like. Just want to add a little bit of extra shadows to these trees don't want too much just a couple of flicks so i'm using this very much like traditional watercolor so it's a, it's the difference is you can do it like traditional watercolor it will certainly change the way you paint and the way you think about painting so for me it's been quite exciting to use something different after nearly 30 well 35 years of actual watercolor painting taking the tape away and we've got hopefully quite a nice little display of watercolour, paint that off around there and literally once the tape come off that's given us quite a nice little wintry autumnal wintry landscape and just it, it, every time I look at it it's different again I want to show you close up to the camera look how the colour look how those yellows are exploding look at the vibrancy of colour that you've got in that autumnal scene there and that's all done using the bespoke crystalline set available on watercolor tv very quickly jump onto the website if you're interested in this if you want to give it a go and try something different got a really good offer go to the art shop come down to watercolor paint and there's two sets set one which is the summery springy set and then set two is the new one that we've just been using here for the autumnal uh, demonstration and that comes with the colours as mentioned there. So the plum violet, orange, turquoise, rose and olive green. Listen, thank you for watching today, for creating this lovely little picturesque, pretty autumnal scene with a bit of snow. It's always good. And I will see you very soon. Do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give us a big fat thumbs up because that really makes things tick nicely on the YouTube channel. 
and I'll see you very soon on Watercolour TV. I'll see you on Sunday for the live workshop. Please get those bookings in. We've got about 10 spaces left. Sunday the 29th, we're doing an autumnal watercolour of Chatsworth. Take care and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye for now.